Good morning. Welcome to worship at St. Andrew United Methodist Church. And today we will be sharing communion. So I invite you, if you haven't already, got some bread or crackers and juice um, to share in communion with us during our worship today. If you have joined this video at 10.15 Sunday morning, please go to our webpage and join me on Zoom so we can actually see one another as we worship. Good morning and welcome to St. Andrew United Methodist Church on Sunday, July the 5th, a weekend where Americans celebrate independence from the British, only to welcome me from Great Britain as their pastor. What does it mean for us to have freedom today, and especially Christian freedom? And before we begin our worship, I invite you to join me in prayer. Gracious God, you have made all of the peoples of the earth for your glory. You invite us to serve you in freedom and in peace. Give to the people of our nation a zeal for justice and the strength for forbearance that we may use our liberty in accordance with your gracious will. We ask this on a day of celebration, a day of hope for a nation made free. We ask this in the name of the one who welcomes all to be free indeed. Inspire us, O oh God, to live and worship in your freedom and for the sake of your kingdom. Amen. Why do we gather for worship? Well, we gather for worship so we can worship God, our Creator, Jesus, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit, who is our constant companion. We come seeking to understand and to grow in our love for God and one another. We come seeking to be changed so that our life tomorrow will be better than today because we have encountered the living God and allowed the Holy Spirit to convict us and to transform us, to become more like Jesus. And so I invite us now to sing this hymn, God of the Ages. Guardian, guide 
God led us into this free land and invited God to be our ruler, guardian, and guide. So my prayer is from Psalm 19, 14, which says, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of not just my heart, but all our hearts be pleasing in your sight. Lord, our rock, and our Redeemer. I have invited Reverend Deb Egloff, our Children, Youth and Family Ministries Director, to join me today. Because today there is a lot of discussion about freedom and how we need to protect our freedom and what might be considered as a restriction to our freedom. You know, I have always believed and shared with my son and youth that I've worked with that God has given us some commandments to live by so that it's not so much of a restriction but in order to give us freedom. In fact, God gave us free will when he created us because of how much God loved us. So within this bubble of protection, we are free to do whatever it is. Or are we? However, when we don't live by God's commandments, we have consequences and confinements. You see, like if you tell one lie, you have to cover it up with another and another. Friends, our freedom comes with some responsibility. And I've also maintained that children are perhaps the most free. I mean, you look at a child out there waving their arms about, it is absolutely beautiful. They have an innocence. And perhaps that's why Jesus said, unless you come as a child, we will not enter that kingdom of God. Dad, how do you talk to children about freedom? Well, I think first of all, just to follow up on your comment, I think children are particularly unique in that they already have this sense of knowing of the presence of God. They know who God is. This morning, as we were planning for uh, the video for the families and the children, we began thinking about the 4th of July and why it was so important. And you know, children do hear about this in school and probably in discussions at home. We reminded ourselves about July 4th, 1776, the day that the leaders of the North American colonies decided to be bold and make this land, this new land, a country of its own. And many of these leaders, I believe, use their Christian freedom to do that, their strength and their bold courage to allow for them to do this. And I believe that when we think about freedom, we can't leave out the events of our history. And so we need to tell that to children. And when we talk about our history, we cannot forget our freedom in Christ. Our Christian freedom speaks into the events of our history. Well, then in thinking about this 4th of July, our bishop has encouraged us to revisit what happened in 1776. His challenge to us was to reread the Declaration of Independence and see how it might still speak to us today through our faith. 
perhaps you will find this an interesting and insightful activity. I know I will, and I, maybe all of our friends will as well. I certainly did. It was something that I had not read before, but it was very intriguing. And today our scripture is from Paul's letter to the Galatians. And he really reminds the Galatians about this freedom in Christ. And Deva and I, Deva and I are going to read that together. This is what he said. So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and that you don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. Plant your feet firmly within the freedom that Christ has won for us. For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters. But don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. After all, the whole law can be summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. But if you are always biting and devouring one another, if you think you're free to attack and tear each other to pieces, watch out. You might just land up destroying one another and the fellowship that you have together. So we're going to stop the scripture reading there for a minute and ask this question, what have we heard from Paul? You know, he said, we are to love one another. And we've all seen and experienced restrictions because of COVID-19. You know, stay at home, keep social distancing, wear masks, and we know what it feels like to not be free to do whatever we want and we've been made aware that we have a responsibility to each other as part of community of God's people. And you know, that is so true, but so often people might, I think, view responsibility in a negative way. But in the picture that Jesus paints, there's a beauty, a beauty in taking loving care of those we are in community mm -hmm. with. And that's responsibility as well. Responsibility is the loving that we do. Yes. You know, when the COVID-19 virus broke out here in the United States, and we were asked to shelter in place, and we were beginning to experience all those things that you mentioned, my 14-year-old grandson texted me late one night, it was around midnight, to tell me that he couldn't sleep. <laughs> he shared with me that he was worried he didn't want anyone to die from the virus. I asked him to say more about his feelings, and he said he just couldn't stop thinking about what might happen to people, especially the family. I asked him what he thought that worry really was. Mm. And he said, Nana, I think it's probably love. I shared with him that when we love, we make an investment in others. And our love for them is both easy and hard. And then I asked him what it would be like if we didn't love or if we didn't have those investments to make. And he said, it would be really lonely. Mm. You see, this loving and investing is a Christian responsibility. And it has two sides. But it is so beautiful. Absolutely. Well, Paul also said, that we are to watch out because when we don't love one another, relationships can be destroyed. And it's heartbreaking for me to see on so many levels that we are so divided in our pursuit for freedom. Well, getting back to the scripture reading, what did Paul have to say next? Here is my advice, he said. Let your whole life be guided by the Holy Spirit. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil. 
which is exactly the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. And there's the problem. The two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. You know, that must have been a real battle for Paul because not only in his letter to the Galatians, but also in his letter to the Romans, it seems as if though he was having this inner turmoil and battle we have in wanting to do what is right, but ending up doing the very thing we don't want to do. And I can't help but wonder whether that really is... um, an indication of the spiritual battle that is within us and also in our world. So let me ask you, what battles have you had within yourself as we have struggled along through this time with COVID-19 and also with Black Lives Matter and the injustices that have been remembered and repeated. Perhaps you're experiencing this in a way that you've not experienced it before. And in the midst of that, my hope is that we're discovering more about who we are. And even who God is. And who God is. Absolutely. So, when we look at what is happening in this world through God's eyes instead of political and social viewpoints, I think we can see more clearly the value of each person's expression of freedom. Well, Paul had more to say to the Galatians, didn't he? Mm Mm-hmm. And reading back to the scripture, this is what he said. But if you follow the leading of the Spirit, you stand clear of the law. You are not under obligation to the law of Moses. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, Quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the Holy Spirit produces kinds of fruit in our lives, love, joy, peace, Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. If our lives are centered in the Spirit, let's be guided by the Spirit. Let's follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Thanks be to God for this scripture. Absolutely. You know, this means, I think, that we are to live in the spirit of Christ's freedom, offered to us through the cross, which gives us our ultimate freedom. Uh I shared with the children that our freedom comes from being followers of Jesus. Freedom for Christians means to be changed by Jesus into loving disciples. And when we're able to love ourselves the way God does, we're all free. We're free from the ways we feel when we don't love ourselves or other people. And that separates us from God. This is not a feeling of freedom. It is a feeling of brokenness or sadness that holds on to us, keeping us from the gift of love. Freedom is also given to us when we are forgiven. Jesus made sure all people were forgiven and free when he died on the cross, and we'll remember that today in our communion. When we can live now knowing 
that when we ask God for forgiveness, that we'll receive it. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. God erases what we did that needed that forgiveness. So we don't need to carry it around anymore. We don't need to carry our bad feelings around. This is a wonderful kind of freedom. Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to lift up some of what that Christian freedom is about in the words of Jesus. In Matthew 11, he said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Now, isn't that a kind of freedom there? So, friends, whatever burden you might be carrying, when you bring your burden to the Jesus that died on the cross for us, you can be set free. So how are you bound and how are you stuck? You know, how is your thinking confined John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, wanted his followers to always ask the question when they gathered together, how is it with your soul? So it's important for us to reflect on that and invite Jesus as we come to the table to set you free from all that binds you, whether it's in body, mind or spirit. Because when Jesus began his ministry and he went into the temple, he took the scroll and once he'd read it, he said this, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind and to set the oppressed free. I think that speaks to us today. So, if you are bound in body, mind or spirit, I want you to know and to experience today that Jesus came to set you free. And so, I invite us to come to Jesus as we lay our burdens down and pray. As we pray, our subject has been freedom. And in order to bring yourself a spirit of freedom, you might take a deep breath in, drawing in that goodness of God that has changed us in so many ways, and then breathe out, breathe away those things that imprison us, those things that bind us up, that keep us from being the free people God intends. You mean like anxiety and worry? Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh, the list goes on, the list goes on. And so let's pray. Listen to these words, take them in. Lord, today we celebrate the birth of our nation, free and cared for by you. We are especially grateful for religious liberty. Often we translate this freedom into something less than it is. So forgive our narrowness. Bless those nations and peoples whose ways differ from ours and keep us from quickness to condemn what we do not understand and help all people find their commonality in you. Help us to work, pray, and sacrifice for that day when the nations of the world will give way to the kingdom, your kingdom. We pray for our leaders. Grant them vision larger than partisan, political, or national interest. And protect our process of government from corruption. Bring us unity of purpose to your vision as a nation. We ask your blessing on those who are jobless, homeless, hungry, or sick, or even struggling in some way. And we pray all today, that we pray 
in the name of the Prince of Peace, our source of freedom in you. Amen. As we continue to pray, I invite you to sing, I surrender all. Surrender all those things that get in the way of us living as God intended us to live, loving one another. you to come to the table and to have your bread and your juice ready to participate and as we bless this holy sacrament uh, inviting you to put your hands over the bread and the cup when I do that so that together um, we will consecrate that which is ordinary into sacred. Jesus invited his disciples to the table And as part of that meal, he took bread and he broke the bread. And then he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Friends, as we come to eat the bread, know that Jesus knows your brokenness. The places where you are hurt and are in need of healing for body mind or spirit, where you do not have that freedom found with peace. So remember that as you come to take the bread, that he offers you healing, a new life, a life of freedom. In the same way, after the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples and said, take and drink. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Friends, when we do not forgive one another, there is a spirit of anxiety, of unrest within our soul. But when we forgive one another, as God has forgiven us through Christ, there's a release, there's a lifting of a burden. And so I pray that you will experience that as you partake in this holy sacrament. And as we come to the table, I invite us to pray that prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we have sung, I surrender all. And we want your will for our lives. Reveal to us those places where we have not surrendered and where we are not walking in your ways. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so we pray that God will pour out his Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and in our homes. That God will pour out his Holy Spirit on this bread and this cup that they might be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we might be the body of Christ in the world. We are to be used by God in a new way to offer hope, to offer peace. So you take the bread for yourself and for those who may be with you and share saying the body of Christ given for you and the cup of salvation poured out for you. Will you pray with me? Thank you, Lord, for providing us with this holy meal, giving us a foretaste of that heavenly banquet. And we pray, O God, that by the shed blood of Christ and his broken body, we might be a new creation to bring hope and peace and love into our world. Amen. Our closing hymn is one that says, leave it there. And when we leave things with Jesus, we can know what it means to have freedom in Christ. Let us sing. If the world were new with gold, all its silver and its gold, and you had to get along with meager fare, just remember in his word how he feeds the little bird. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Leave it there, leave it there. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. If Trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. If your body suffers pain and your health you can't regain, don't forget that God in heaven has his prayer. He will make a way for you and will lead you safely through. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Leave it there, leave it there. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, He will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. I bless you with joy. May you find moments of laughter and bliss even in the midst of sorrow or suffering. 
I bless you with the fruits of humility so that you might be humble and sacrificial actions be instruments to preserve our community and love your neighbors. And I bless you with peace so that you might go in peace, so that you might wash your hands, you might love your neighbors, you might wear your masks, and you might know that you are never alone, for God is with you. Amen.